Good day and thanks for tuning in. My name is Mike Cluett, regional counselor here in the town of Milton. You're watching Local Matters on your TV Halton, which is truly local television. As regular viewers of the show will know, I bring on my council colleagues from time to time to discuss important issues that are facing Milton and North Halton. And uh, my two guests this week are Ward 4 local councillor Z- Samira Ali and Ward 4 regional councillor Zishan Hamid, who are my colleagues on council now for the last number of years. And one of the biggest issues that we've been dealing with for a very long time that affects both of our areas is the CN proposed intermodal. Samira Zishan, welcome to the show again. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for, having, for me. having us. As we all know, CN has been, uh, I say, trucking along, uh, to use a pun, and uh, we've had some uh, recent announcements uh, from the federal government giving what they call a conditional approval for the intermodal. And uh, what I wanted to do in this section of the program is to talk about the questions that we get from residents, because we get a number of them uh, weekly, daily, and uh, I think this would be a good uh, time to sort of do an FAQ on what's been going on with CN. Uh, so I'll start with uh, Zishan. What are some of the things that you've been hearing from your residents uh, regarding CN, uh, some of the questions or concerns that they have? Yeah, thank you, Mike. Uh, mostly it's around traffic and health impact. People are very, very concerned on the health impact from this project because, as you know, a lot of development is happening right around the CN lands. Uh, as well as traffic, because traffic is an issue on a normal day today. Add 1,600 additional trucks in the beginning of the project, and then much more once it expands. And uh, people are very, very concerned about how they're going to get around, health of their families, as well as the property values. You, you said there, once it expands. I know that the, uh, the part of the proposals is they're not going to do any expansion, but we all know once the, uh, the intermodal does get in there, there'll be future expansion in there. And a lot of residential development is happening, as you mentioned, in that area. And again, Samira, I know that you are a very big, strong proponent of, uh, of open areas, park spaces uh, in general. How do you think that would impact uh, th- those developments? Thank you, Mike. Uh, one of the things that I hear from a lot of my neighbors, I live right on Louis Saint Laurent, so that it's very close to the proposed intermodal. And uh, what I hear from my neighbors is that everybody's really concerned about their quality of life. I know we are talking about, you know, trucks, and we're talking about pollution, environmental effects, but overall quality of life goes down when you see, you know, such environmental hazard going around you. And so when people see that, would they be more likely to go into parks or not? I don't think so. So like Councillor Hamid said, I mean, we both represent the same area. We get the same questions. People are also wondering how CN was able to do this. And honestly, we have nothing but the truth to share with them that, you know, this was done in a very strategic way so, and something that we had no control over. And so it's, it's a constant... Um, education piece that we have to deal with. Deal with. I know uh, Councillor Hamid and I, along with uh, former Councillor Robert Duvall, we had a, a number of CN intermodal information sessions and a lot of those questions. Uh, Zishan, I, want, I know this is probably uh, off the top of your head. Can you give us a little bit of a brief history? I know that we it began in the early part of the 2000s. They went away in 2008 and then uh, sort of we'll take it up from when they came back and uh, in that 2014, I believe. Yeah, I mean, even before they came back, I think it's important for people to know that when the region was doing its planning, CN had contributed their input to the plan and confirmed that they had no plans of building an intermodal in this land. So a lot of times people say, hey, well, why did the region or why did the town plan it this way? Well, CN was part of those plans. And the current plans you see are built with CN's input. They just went back on their word in 2014 when they announced that they were starting a project in 2015. Uh, fortunately, as you know, Castro Cloyd and Castro Lee, uh, mm-hmm. we've been able to push back. It's 2021. The project still hasn't started yet. So good job, town and region and public. But in 2014, when the region announced it, they also, when the, sorry, when CN announced it, they also announced that they did not feel any provincial or municipal laws or bylaws apply on them. And that's the biggest issue in my perspective. It's not even the, it's our ability to monitor and regulate CN because CN's argument is that they can do whatever they want in this land and there's nothing we can do about it. So when it comes to noise, pollution, 
uh, when it comes to general pollution, when it comes to conservation areas, uh, CN's argument is tough luck, guys. We're free to do as we please. And again, that's, uh, like I said, very important to say that they have consistently sort of pushed us aside and said, okay, well, municipal concerns don't really matter. Regional concerns, provincial concerns, it doesn't really matter. We're going to build what we need to build. And, and when they when they backed out, when they came, they, they contributed to our official plan. That's why we have the residential developments where they are, because we planned five, 10, 15 years out. Uh, and now when they came back on it, that's why a lot of the questions I know that you get is why do we have residential areas so close to this? And one of the thing, questions I know that I get uh, that I've received is, uh, is the cost. Well, they're going to pay money anyways. Well, they're not going to be paying what they call development charges. And the development charges, as we both all know, is, uh, is vitally important to, uh, to infrastructure and development. And to, to give you a quick uh, snapshot, $49 million is going to be lost in development charges uh, if this intermodal goes in place, as opposed to what was going to go in there. And again, uh, Samira, you, you know that the, now you know the importance of, of development charges and the growth of a community. $49 million is a large chunk. Absolutely. It is the direct, and the direct uh, result of that is us not being able to provide the services to the community that is growing so fast and wants proper parks, wants proper bike lanes, wants, pro wants proper trails. I mean, all of this, this is what we are here for. We are here to provide these services to the community. But unfortunately, with a loss such as that, I think that is the direct effect of, uh, you know, us losing on revenues. And one of the questions I get a lot is about this too, is, oh, you know what? It's going to be good for business. And, and that is the, the exact answer. It's not going to be good for business because we are losing so much money in development charges. They are paying taxes. I want to be clear about that, but only land taxes, not the development charges. Yeah, we are looking at uh, the, the increase. It's also the increased costs. And as we, uh, and Councillor Hamid and I have been working really hard the last uh, number of terms, getting Britannia Road expanded, and uh, we can now see the, we're starting to see the benefits of that as uh, going from Termain over to 25 and that part, portion of the project will be uh, finished soon. But it's the capital costs and, and the infrastructure, millions of dollars in roads improvements uh, that would definitely have to come out of the coffers of Milton and Halton taxpayers. Yeah, and the question is, uh, where does that money come from? Because people have a limited capacity to pay. We only have a limited pool of money. So if we're taking money from somewhere to spend on roads that is not coming from CN, but should come from CN, uh, that money is not funding other services that it should be funding. Uh, the other issue is that the federal panel found that there are unmitigable impacts from this that cannot be mitigated. Uh, if they cannot be mitigated, and CN on one hand is arguing that they can mitigate them, but on the other hand, they are arguing that there must be no municipal oversight. So who's going to monitor that? Because uh, it, it, it's municipalities that do these things. Federal government doesn't have bylaw officers monitoring things. Municipalities take care of this. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really disappointed with the federal decision. Let me be very clear about that. Well, like I said, that came down recently, and I know that Halton Region is uh, filing an injunction. And we're moving forward with that process. And we're not alone. We do have the cooperation of the four municipalities, uh, Oakville, Burlington, Halton Hills, and Milton, as well as our friends in Conservation Halton. And I think that's a, a, a big vital piece of the puzzle going forward is, is the imp impact of our environment uh, on uh, this potential development with the added trucks the, and just the industry that's going in that particular area. 12 schools. 12 schools, two long-term care facilities. Think about it. I mean, do we need trucks, heavy trucks, seven days a week, day in, day out, coming into that area? You know, 34,000 people live right one kilometer away from the proposed location. This is insane at every, every level. It is not NIMBYism. A lot of people try to use the cop out, oh, it's NIMBYism. It is not. Why, if it would be, you wouldn't have four municipalities, their local governments, the region of Halton, all working hard to stop this. Yeah, and, and the interesting thing is that even the city of Mislaga has passed unanimous motions against it because they themselves are concerned that these truck traffics, because of the way highways get clogged up, 
we'll take Miss Saga inside roads. We'll we'll just go on Jerry Road or Bishani Road all the way through Miss Saga to get to where they're going to. Um, people need to know that these trucks, when it comes to intermodals, they're independent contractors. These are not CN owned trucks, so we can't regulate them. They're like any other vehicular traffic. They'll take whatever route makes sense to them. They're definitely 100% not going to get on 407. Uh, and it's not something we're going to enforce either. That was one of the points that uh, one of the questions, why can't we just direct them down to the 407? Uh, and I think that uh, is, a, is a perfect way to answer that. Um, one of the, uh, the last question I'll ask you very quickly on this one is what are the next steps forward? What are, what are we as a council, as a regional council, and as a local council, what are we going to do moving forward to, uh, to do our best to stop and put the brakes on this? Yeah, I can talk about it from regional perspective and Councillor Ali can touch it from the local perspective. Uh, the fight's not over. As I mentioned earlier, CN had planned to start construction in 2015. It's 2021 that things have happened yet. Uh, we are fighting this uh, in court. So this is before court. I would say that's going to go on for another four or five years. And no matter which way the decision goes, there'll be appeals and appeals and appeals. So it's, it's we're in for a long haul. Our hope is that CN, uh, you know, acts as a good corporate citizen and comes to the table to negotiate so we can find them land in suitable area, which would be a heavy industrial area, not a residential or light employment area. Absolutely agreed with you, Councillor Hamid. And so at the local level, we will continue to listen to great advocacy groups like Milton Says No, um, Rail, um, great uh, groups that have been working on this for over a decade now, have been working hard, have pulled resources, all volunteer based uh, to educate the people and to fight the good fight. And so we'll keep doing that at the local level and making sure that CN listens to us. You know, our job is to make sure we take the people's voice to CN, let them know we don't want this for legitimate reasons. There are municipalities that want the intermodal there. They're asking for it. What is stopping CN from doing that? I don't understand. <laughs>